Welcome back to the channel guys. This is Tales from the Junkyard and uh, we're back with another car review. So what you're looking in front of you is a 1974 Plymouth Satellite Sebring Plus. Uh, and isn't she a beauty? I mean look at that thing. Let me get out of the way there. Wow. Just look at that. This is my dad's car. Uh, he's had it for a little over five to six years um, and it's been a build since then actually. Uh, I've helped him here and there but primarily it's been his Peck project. Um, so today we're gonna go over this thing, what it is, what what's it all about, what what he put into it, my dad's put into it, um, why he got this vehicle, and also pros and cons about it. Right. So we're gonna go over all the good things and you know, as always, the bad things. So uh, let's check it out. As I said before, guys, this is my dad's 1974 Plymouth Satellite Sebring Plus Special Edition. Ooh, we'll get to the special edition in a minute, but just wanted to point out a few things before we get started. So this vehicle is right now, this color that you're looking at, and we'll see it better in the sunlight, but it's called a green tea latte. It's not the original color of the car. Originally, this vehicle was a butterscotch color, kind of like a, a, like a butter yellow, so to speak. And the interior was pretty much the same color as well. These things came like that a lot of the time. And even the volume on top, the black PCC on top, that was also like a butterscotch brown color. But anyway, it's been redone in this green. Um, and the interior is also green. It's just darker. I'll show you that in a second. But just take a, take a minute to admire this. Look, look, let's look at this car. I mean, let's look at the lines. First off, let's look at this front end. This really aggressive, low wedged front end. Look at that. Isn't that really cool? Super attention to detail. This was actually rebuilt in the span of about three to four years, maybe less. Just follow that line. Look at how this thing shines. Right? Even the wheels, there's pinstriping in the wheels, back to front. And we'll get out in the open in a little bit. But just look at those lines. Just amazing. Now these wheels, interesting thing about these wheels, these are period correct Anson Indy 500 style wheels. Um, they are the slotted mags, if you will. The rears here are a 14 by 10 inch. So it's a 14 inch wheel by 10 inch wide. Um, and the front, even though it looks like the same wheel, this is actually a nine inch or eight and a half uh, wide wheel. So we got tens in the back, nines in the front. Ironically, it's the same tire all around because, well, these 14 inch tires have become pretty hard to come by lately. And uh, we can only get a certain pair. So yeah, that's what's on here right now. Look at that piece of trim. And there's a cool little Easter leg to this trim here. If you go far enough down, you'll see a red stripe in there. Well, that red stripe, if you'll notice, is followed along the entire car. It's a theme, like an underlying theme that ties the whole thing together. Look at that. It's right here on the trim. Here's the special edition emblem, and I'll go over that in a minute, and the Satellite Sebring Plus. And that emblem you see there, that used to be the Plymouth emblem. That's supposed to signify the boat that landed on Plymouth Rock from the settlers. It's a, it's a callback from way back when. And let's get a little nice little shot of the interior here. Look at that. Beautiful interior. Right? We got simulated buckets in the back. Very nice, with headrests. To repeat, this is a Plymouth Satellite Sebring Plus. What does that mean? Well, a Plymouth Satellite Sebring Plus essentially is a midsize, or at least what was considered midsize in the 70s, American car, either two-door or four-door. Um, the satellite came in both four-door and two-door, and even a wagon. Um, although it looked way different than this, the, the four-door, but this is a hardtop, and Basically, you got a basic, basic bare bones car. So this car was available as your basic satellite. Bench seat, sit six people. You can have a V8, the smallest V8 that came available with this was uh, something called a 318 or what's kind of in my car now, but um, it, a 5.2 liter for you metric guys. All the way up, this thing could be all the way had to like a 400 cubic inch engine, you know, or 6.6 uh, .6 liters. When we first purchased the vehicle, my dad purchased this vehicle, this came as a satellite Sebring Plus. It is what it is. However, 
This came optioned from the factory with a factory cruise control. It has electric uh, seat in it. It has an AC system, which yes, that was still optioned at the time. Electric locks. The vinyl roof, believe it or not, the way the style of vinyl roof, which is this here, that is called a halo roof. That style of vinyl roof was an option. They came in three different styles of roofs. This style, the full, which would actually cover this piece here and this little section here, right? And then you had something that basically covered just the front part of the cabin. So it went from the A pillar here, covered all this entire thing, and then there was a piece of trim that would stop right around here, go across the roof, and then cover the front. So that was it. Give you maybe like a, like a semi-targa top looking thing. And then you had this. And this is often referred to as a toupee. Also with the Satellite Steamer Plus, you get a few features. You get the sports a steering wheel. You get the, the, the console in the middle with the slapstick shifter. I'll show you that in a second. And then the rally gauging. And then it's all sort of like sports feely type things. You see the switch over there? That is right there. That thing is for the power windows. And the way the power locks on this work is there's actually no switch for them. These are the switch. So you'll hear it in a second. That's up. I mean down. Up. Locked, unlocked. It's pretty crazy, pretty interesting. We'll go there in a minute. But anyway, with that option package, the, the, the Sebring Plus package, you got all, look at all this trim. Goes across the hood here, into the top, into the vinyl roof, around the windows. You have two sets of trim here, you'll notice. One for the actual window and the, the actual door trim itself. Continues into the quarter panel. You got the wheel trim and then the trim on the bottom. So just all kinds of trim. The logo here in the front. And yeah, so this vehicle had pretty much everything you could possibly ask for at the time. In fact, the only option on this car that was available for it that isn't on this particular vehicle would be, believe it or not, these things came with a sunroof, or some of these did. You can get a sunroof with this. It was a mechanical sunroof. And there's a little crank. Some of you guys might actually know about that. And it would go right in the middle here. And it was done by a company called American Sunroof here in California. They would send out the bodies, they'd cut them up, and they would make sunroofs for these. Those are extremely rare, but they're still out there. And not a whole lot of them came out. But anyway, moving on. A few bits and pieces that were added onto this car, because this is more of a resto mod. Now, a resto mod is you take something like this, right? something that you're rebuilding, and you're gonna put your own touches to it. You're gonna sort of hot rod it a little bit. So yes, of course, engine modifications and that, but also aesthetic things, right? Maybe at a wing, maybe at this, maybe at that, St stuff that uh, may have not have been available for that car. What we tried to do with this, or what my father tried to do with this, is we went a step further and turned it into a theme car. So we got the ba ba basic bones of this, right? Really good bones. And we decided, you know, how cool would it be if Plymouth at the time, Try to compete with like the likes of BMW or I'm going to say like, you know, a BMW sort of like a 5 Series or uh, something like a Jaguar of the time, like a GT Coupe sort of luxury Grand Tour thing. Because this is the mid to late 70s. Power was pretty much out the window. Like the whole horsepower, fire breathing, Hemis and things, those were gone. So at this time, they wouldn't be thinking about that. They were thinking something more like luxury, right? And maybe a little performance. And so we built something, or at least he built something, that sort of captures the essence of a little bit more sporty, luxurious, with, you know, some power. So, yeah, this is essentially a one of none. Herein lies this special edition badge here. Now, this keen-eyed Mopar guys would see this and say, oh, that doesn't belong there. But the reason that's on there is, A, we found it in the junkyard. We thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> and... uh the other reason was this sort of, all the things that we added to this sort of turns this into a special edition. Well, if you'll notice, the interior is a little different than vinyl. That's because these seats are upholstered in full on leather. The seats, the actual dash pad that's in there, that's leather. The inserts to make it look like a, like a bucket back here, those are leather. Heck, even the headliner's leather. The coolest things about all of this is that this whole thing, here, let me open this up for you guys. See, there's that electric seat controller. I'll go that in a minute. All of this, while not optional and not available at the time, could have been done at the time. 
See, this stuff was available through Chrysler, these, these products, but they were never thrown into this car. We said, what if they had? What if they did? What if they said, screw it, we're going to throw the bells and whistles in this thing. We're going to make, we're going to lose our minds. We're going to make a car to compete with the European competition, right? And so here we go. Once again, here is the controller for all the, uh, the electric windows. And so this right here, this door panel was actually custom painted by myself and my father. And you'll see the black and the green. Now this is to match with the green that's outside. Again, going with that European sort of sportiness, grand tour thing, right? We even got some wood in here. And we've tried to preserve as much of the wood, as you'll notice on the dash and everything, as we could. The chrome and everything. The cruise control, which is actually set right here. Let's see if you can see that. That's the cruise control controls. Let's get into this thing. Let's climb in. Okay, so look at this. Here, let me, let me take this stupid key. Yeah, it, shut up. Okay, there we go. So now, look at that. We got a speedometer, we got our tachometer, and our four gauges. Right, we got our AM, FM radio. You'll see, I'll discuss this thing in a minute. And the cool thing is, all the lighting works. It's been redone completely. Now here's where I'm gonna start crossing over into resto mods. See that tachometer right there? What we did, or well, what he and I did is we actually took an aftermarket tachometer and we took it apart. We made a face for it, a custom face for it. We actually made bigger, bigger numbers, sorry. And we actually spaced it out. So all of that stuff's custom made by yours truly there, which took a minute. And uh, we actually made it all work inside of there and it fits and voila, there it is. It works, it's perfect. Now, in keeping with that Restro Mod idea, we got these things. That is a... Uh, Bluetooth communication device for uh, the AM FM radio so it turns your AM FM radio to a Bluetooth receiver that's pretty obvious there's a lot of guys that do that but you see that little remote right past it right here that thing that right there that is for the mirror a right hand mirror so now most people don't know this nowadays but back in the day these things these right hand mirrors were actually optional they were not mandatory not till a lot later and so these mirrors usually came in a manual form. So you got the right hand mirror, cool. But you had to go reach over there, move it around and stuff. That was a hassle. So at the same time, Chrysler, the parent company to Plymouth, had you know, uh, Chrysler products available that were a little more opulent, a little more luxurious. And so those vehicles came with a remote uh, right hand mirror. And that's what that is. It controls that mirror up there. So if I mess with this thing, you'll see. So if I do this, You'll see that move around. Look at that. Crazy, right? Let's move forward to the middle there. See that? Well, that doesn't look very stock now, does it? Now you see the tablet there? You see all these other gauges? Well, these external gauges, this gauge right here is a um, AFR meter. So it's a air fuel ratio meter. And that next one there is a, a vacuum meter. So he's actually using both of these to tune the vehicle to make sure that the vehicle is running an optimal uh, imagine this this is a 70 1974 car it only has a carburetor and really nothing else you know electronic uh, ignition system but really just pretty archaic technology and he's sitting here with an air fuel ratio meter and a vacuum sensor to make sure that the car is running efficiently as possible i mean that's crazy that's that is some next level tuner you know old school tuner stuff that's really kind of lost in time and then you have this other gauge here. You see that gauge right there? Well, he actually has air shocks in the back of this. Now, just like my car, these things tend to have sagging uh, leaf springs. And you could get brand new leaf springs and put them in the back and all that stuff. And that's great and all, but those things are expensive. And honestly, some air springs kind of add to a lot of stuff. And they level and they do a bunch of stuff that, that help out in ways that just, just slapping on some leaf springs won't. So, let's continue on. A little add-on auxiliary you know power deal so back up here now that tablet that tablet's actually meant for a rear rear view camera because if i'll show you in a second here you see back there can you see back there pretty much that's about as best as you're gonna get because you can you guys can actually see this better than i can through the mirror that's how terrible the rear view vision is because, you know, at the time, it was all about style. And plus, there's like a mile of trunk back there, and I'll show you that in a second. 
And if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to hit something or someone. So the order of the day, rear view camera. And that's what that tablet's for. And of course, you know, music and stuff. It does communicate with this if you really want to. The options. So now we'll move on to something that's sort of a point of contention with a lot of people. And these pillar gauges. Now, the reason these pillar gauges exist on this car is that these things... You know, you got your water temperature, you got your oil pressure, and you got volts. Well, the reality is, this is old technology. We have not refurbished any of this. We It works, and we made it work. But to be quite honest, they're, you know, reliable-ish. Whereas this provides a, a second opinion, so to speak. It's like having two different doctors, right? This is going to tell you one thing, this is going to tell you the other, and nine times out of ten, this is the correct one. So... This pretty much tells you what it is. This, and hopefully this kind of matches. And we're not gonna tear this up, at least he's not going to, because these are already pretty good. So just, you know, this is removable. This, if we wanna get rid of it, we can tear this whole thing out and we didn't do anything to the car. That's why this exists up here. But anyway, I mean, like I said, look at that dash. Look at that dash. Wow. That whole thing's leather, man. And yes, it does have AC. We'll go through that in a second. And the weird, one of the weirdest things here, the quirk and feature and kind of, you know, where you see that, that's your AC control. So it's all the way to the left. Meaning, passenger, yeah, nah, -uh. you're gonna ask me what temperature you want, what temperature is gonna be. I decide, sir, I get to decide, me. Driver oriented all day long. Okay, now, let me show you something really cool. So this thing, this thing down here, what's the big, big idea with this? Well, this is called a T-handle, and this was available on the sport packages, right? You could buy this. This is a, an automatic transmission. And so the way these things worked was you could, you know, shift it into gear, number one, slap it into two, slap it into three. It made you feel like you had control over these. You want to go back down? Two, one. It's only three gears, but it, you know, it gives you a little bit more sportiness. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool idea. Once again, this is the, the the console. Learn to speak, Anthony. You know, nothing much here. As always, we haven't escaped the the need for tobacco in this era. So um, we got ashtray here. A couple of more ashtrays back there, right? There's one there and one on the other side. Some more of that wood trim on the door paneling. Yep, look at that. The special thing about the stereo, there's only three bolts holding this thing together and there's a uh, like a housing back here, kind of like a grant, like an aftermarket grant steering wheel. These were meant to be interchangeable. So remember, options, we're talking about options here. So you could have this, right? You could have a different steering wheel that would just have like two different bows here or a plastic molded one, right? There was that. And then you had one that was like, it was like a, like a wooden, faux wood type steering wheel called a rim blow you can actually squeeze it and it would actually horn the horn would activate it was crazy it was like this crazy wood looking thing but that's a pretty cool idea but yeah that's the interior i mean it, there's it's a real nice place to live in yes that seat is also um electric you know it, it moves back and forth so it's a four-way all right let's move on to the outside all right one other thing guys is i want to show you this jacket before i move on to the outside this jacket's pretty cool um, it was sort of a brainchild of myself and my sister. This jacket, you know, it was something to like represent the times. The guy that would buy this type of Plymouth, if it did exist, would want to buy everything available apparel-wise for this car. Like the Corvette guys had their jackets, the, the Porsche guys have that, their Ferraris. So, you know what? Why not Plymouth? Why not have your jacket that matches the car, right? You just have that like, that, that, that collector item feel, that special feel. Just figured you guys might like to see that. That's that right there. That was custom made for my dad. And there's only one of that as far as I know. One other thing, guys, that I forgot to mention was it's sort of buried in here. It's a feature that we've added on. Again, within the availability of Chrysler of the era, to keep it period correct, is that. Now, that button is familiar to the older guys. But that button right there is for the trunk. It's an electronically operated or electric solenoid operated trunk. So you want to get in the back there? You heard that thunk? Trunk open. Cool, right? And speaking of that trunk, let's check that baby out. This big old flap here. Look at the size of this. Now, for reference, this is my hand, and that is the trunk. Let me, there we go. 
I mean, Jesus, I could fit in there. That is a spare. That's the spare that came with this car of the time with the jack and everything. And here is that electronic popper that I told you about. It's again, look at the lines of this thing. Just beautiful. There's a Plymouth satellite thing. Now this style of vehicle, this um, shape of vehicle was advertised as the fuselage style in, back in the 70s, early to mid 70s for Chrysler. Now this style right here uh, was, it changed a little bit, but from 1971 to 1974, we had this shape for Plymouth's. The front ends changed a little and the rear ends changed a little, but essentially basically the same. From far away, you really couldn't tell the difference. The lights change, so on and so forth. But, I mean, I think it looks really cool. Now check this out. See those lights? These lights are actually behind a piece of plexiglass, or Lexan. He custom made those covers. There's actually some on the back as well. So, just little pieces like that, this grill. This grill actually comes colored either with the black inserts you see there, just the black, right? And some gray outlines. Or it came completely gray and looked like an egg crate. This has pinstriping in it to set it off a little bit, some chrome. So there's been a lot of attention to detail placed in this car. You know, again, upping that cool factor, upping that luxurious factor. We're trying to turn this into a car that is sort of a one of one type of thing, you know, something that could have existed, but just doesn't. To that, it does have uh, disc brakes in the front. We did upgrade the front end uh, suspension with a sway bar, a bunch of all the good stuff, you know, the, 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 the shocks are heavy duty. Everything's heavier duty that were available of the time for this kind of car, but just weren't on the car. The back end also has a, uh, a sway bar, which was optional at the time. Now most cars come with all that stuff. This is all optional. Um, you gotta understand, these things handled like the marshmallows on pillows. You know, they, this is did not, the handling was, was laughable at best. So we try to get it down to where it needs to be. All right, so let's say we see the engine on. Huh? Let's check out this beast. Look at this thing. So that 360 there, four barrel, that is a 1974 Chrysler 360 cubic inch or 5.9 liter V8, four barrel. So that is carbureted. Uh, no fancy fuel injection in this thing. Nope, this is all archaic as archaic can possibly get. This engine at the time was rated at about 240 horsepower for this 360 stock. Um, at the moment, as it sits here, it's probably putting out about 400 horsepower with all its add-ons and stuff, which is, you know, a lot of horsepower for what it was meant for, but at the same time, for something that weighs 4,000 pounds, it's just about, you know, adequate. Few add-ons, this here right here, this is actually a um, fuel regulator. Now, why would you have that if this is pretty much stock, right? Well. Believe it or not, the carburetors of the time don't like high pressures. They don't, they, you ruin floats and it gets complicated, but pretty much all you really need for these things is about three PSI and they're happy and you never get flooding issues and it takes care of a lot of problems. This big old honking piece of metal here, that, that is a AC uh, compressor. It looks like a little motor, right? Like a V-twin almost, but yeah, that's your compressor for all the, the AC system. Here's the, the condenser. You got the little uh, receiver dryer there and all the piping back there for it. There's a coil, a high, uh, a high uh, voltage coil back there, high capacity. Uh, we got some cold air intake system that he's been working on lately. He just got it done recently. Um, the engine, he did rebuild himself. The funny thing about this engine here is that it, it is a 360 uh, that's been a little bit overboard, a little massage. So it just got a little bit more power into this thing. It's got, you know, high performance heads, uh, high performance camshaft, it has, uh, the engine's been overboard 30, so it's actually around a 365 cubic inches, or about six liters. Um, it is backed up by the, by the automatic transmission, but man, you, you wouldn't even know it. This thing moves like, like it's lighter than air, and yet this, this behemoth here, this whole thing is roughly 4,000 pounds or more. It is a lot, but there's a lot of car here for it, right? And believe it or not, this entire thing, this right here, all this, no chassis. This is a union. In fact, all Mopar products or Chrysler products from the early 60s all the way up to the late 80s, all of these things, these rear wheel cars, were basically made as unibodies. So there's a chassis member on the bottom here holding these together where the engine holds and the suspension. The rear is box 
ends of pieces of sheet metal that go welded on to the actual, or riveted on, go well, spot welded on to the bottom of the floor pan. So there's not really a chassis back here. The only real chassis to speak of is right here. And so this right here, this big old honking thing, this is for your cruise control. So the cruise control works with the speedometer uh, and some vacuum and your electronic pieces right here. So it would hold a certain vacuum. The speedometer would receive its speed and then another linkage that went into the carburetor in there would hold the linkage open or the carburetor open to that set speed. Complicated, but it worked. Another custom touch, pretty cool little thing, is in here. Now, if I didn't tell you about this, you really wouldn't even know. But in there, tucked up underneath here, is a signal light. It's pretty cool, see? There you go, look at that. Couldn't even tell, could you, until it turned on. Now that is sort of a callback to the 1970 Plymouth Barracuda. See, ah, it works pretty good. Yeah, so this whole thing was sort of like they could do this back then, but just chose not to for obvious or whatever reason. And yeah, that's the motor. I mean, it's pretty simple, pretty easy. So overall, a pretty cool car, I think. Uh, and now I think it's time for a test drive, right? I said before this is a 1974 Plymouth satellite Sebring Plus all that fancy name really means is that this thing has the higher trim possible or the highest trim possible for this style of vehicle for this particular vehicle now keep that in mind this was actually your bargain based mid-sized vehicle of the 1970s right so Plymouth made a Plymouth Satellite normal, just a basic bench seats, sit six people, had an engine, and you had space. That's really all it was back in the day. Uh, this particular model, the Sebring Plus, uh, added more features, you know? So it was like the limited edition or what have you. You could get a V8 in it with a bigger, a bigger V8. You can get, you know, two buckets. You can get um, vinyl everything essentially in here you could get a cruise control which this has uh, let me just rattle off the list real quick cruise control right electric locks we got electric seats on both sides this thing's got an ac yes ac was still optional at the time and it has everything you could ever really want in one of these cars basically this was optioned to the teeth and yet it still wasn't their top of the line vehicle that would have been the uh, GTX the Plymouth GTX which before I want to say maybe five years prior to this car that the GTX was an option for this vehicle so it was quite literally a Plymouth satellite GTX it wasn't until later that the GTX itself became an actual uh, model but yeah so this thing it's really nice it's super plush in here like i said before we got leather everything or at least as much as we could possibly have made it he went through the whole car you're talking about leather seats we're talking about a leather you know headliner we're talking about leather dash pad a two-tone interior so we got the black and the dark green to match the exterior basically what i'm trying to say is this thing is not only optioned out from the factory but he went a step further and kept adding and adding and adding to this car. In fact, it's to the point where he has a backup camera to this thing, just like I showed you earlier. So a project car doesn't need to look like, you know, like mine where it's all rusted or, you know, kind of on the way. A project car could be something that's ongoing, just like this vehicle. Something that, you know, is, looks like it's done to someone else, but it really is, it never really is. And when is a project ever really done, right? But yeah, I mean, this thing handles good for what it is. You know, it takes a corner okay. You know, uh, leftish, rightish, so to speak. 
it, uh, it does actually feel a lot sportier than the car of its day, you know? So it feels like something that would have existed at the time, but didn't actually, you know, wasn't available. So, you know, we're looking at a GT-esque type car once again, right? Um, that could have competed with the likes of like Jaguar or something in its opulence and in, in, in the amount of luxury that's actually in this car uh, with the power, you know, you got the 360 V8 in front of this thing, also performance stout. And then you have, you know, it's an automatic transmission, so it's still as American as it possibly be. It's got all of the <laughs> unnecessary luxury items you could ever really want in a car like this. It's, it's so cool. Like I said, it runs fine. It's super soft, super relaxing. The AC does actually work in this thing. It's quite nice, actually. It does actually get up and go. It works really, really well. There's a lot of torque in this thing. You can barely feel its heft. And at about 4,000 pounds, this is no lightweight. So I'd say this car turned out pretty much the way he wanted it to. It's quite nice. It's fast. You know for what it is it has good pick up and go i mean it's carbureted vehicle it has mechanical essentially everything and yet functions just like a modern efi it turns right on it's extremely reliable um super comfortable so overall very nice car very pretty of course um super luxurious for what it is and at the end of the day it's something that it's a conversational piece, right? It's something that didn't exist. It's a one of one. It pretty much makes only real sense to the person who built it. All right, guys. So that was the review of my dad's 1974 Plymouth Satellite Sebring Plus Special Edition. This thing was so cool to drive. I mean, I can't gush enough about the the color of this thing it's an awesome car if you ever get a chance to see one of these in person go check it out they're really really cool um they're super rare they're getting rarer and let me know in the comments below if uh, you want to see another review or more reviews like this if you like this video please like share subscribe all that good stuff you know and uh yeah let me know your thoughts as always see you next time